Chapter 31. A biz Business Allegory. My First Life a Business Failure. Seeking Success. The Parson's Advice. Investing in a Sawmill. Self-Reliance. A Soliloquy. Asleep Under the Tree. The Ram. Up a Tree. Legs as well as Head Necessary to Success. The Labeled Tree. Label of Success. How to Succeed in Business. A Great Finance Year. A Dream and Its Realization. The wife appeals in vain. That blessed ram to the rescue, knocked from the top of an unpaid for $10,000 house, the ram speaks. In this, my first life, it will be seen that I was not successful as a businessman. Everything I tried for many years was a failure. I lost all my means and time, and all I had to show was that I had made another failure. I thought I must keep trying. I came to a place in the road on life one going to the right and the other to the left. I halted with the people who stood in a very large crowd at the forks of the road to ask which of them led to success. In one common yell, all said, Any of us can tell you all about the roads to success. I asked the host what it would cost me to get an opinion from each one of them. The answer was, It will cost you nothing at present but your time as we are willing to give opinions. I was not very well impressed at first on account of the poorly clad condition most of them were in. Finally, a very well-dressed, gentlemanly-looking man stepped forward and said, I am a minister, and I advise you to take, to take road, pointing to the right. However, I will ask you about your financial conditions. Have you any money at your command? I told him I had a small amount, which was but a few hundred dollars, and he said, Come right along with me. I asked no questions, and I had found a man of God, and away I went. After the usual amount of squatting and flattery, in which he told me that just such a great and good man as I would, would be a great benefit in his community. It being Saturday afternoon, he asked me to stay over Sabbath, rest, and go to church with him, as he would fill the pulpit. Oh, how good I felt! I felt that I had gotten with a brother." He told the sexton to give the very, me the very best seat in the church. My heart heaved and leaped with joy. The services were opened with music. I enjoyed the melodies and almost wish I was dead and in heaven and could listen to such music all the time. By this time I began to feel my unworthiness by the bushel, and as the minister passed by me, I asked him to pray for my success. And all he said was, God bless you, brother. After singing, he proceeded to the services with prayer, in which he thanked God for our good government, our peace and power to keep peace with all nations or fight if they preferred it. He thanked God for the crops, good health, and schools, and says, O oh Lord, we are ashamed and truly sorry that we have to preach the gospel in such a poorly constructed and provided church house as this. Thou knowest it is a shame and disgrace on the people to even think or call this the house of God. Bless our souls. Amen. I did not feel the hint or see the rabbit's foot yet. He opened the Bible and like a magic slammed, slam it opened to that good old verse, Blessed is the cheerful giver. He smiled at me just as sweet and says, We are very much in need and must have money. He told the sexton to pass around the hat, gave him a wink and a nod. He roared and snorted about the blessings that belong to the cheerful giver and smiled at me again. I thought, as I was a stranger in the community, I would do ten times better than I had been in the habit of doing at home, and thumbled into the hat a whole silver dollar. The sexton said, Humph, we are building a church and expected better things of you. I began to reason on the grounds of my limited means. At this time, the minister pointed his finger at a trained sister who hallooed, Hallelujah! which proved to be the signal for a general move of all the sisters, both old and young, to pull my leg for more money. And they got the last cent I had with me, which was ten dollars. By this time, the rabbit's foot was in plain view. In a low whisper, I said, Sold again. I walked out into the big common road of life for another journey. I traveled on and on until I came to the forks of this road. Here I found another very large congregation. They had in their hands hammers, monkey wrenches, chisels, files, and various kinds of implements. I greeted them as an inquiring stranger should. By one common voice they cried, Come into the crowd and sit, sit on a log with us. 
I told them I was an, an explorer and in search of success, and had been told that there was a storehouse someplace in this direction in which it could be purchased. A very dignified gentleman says, This is the place you are hunting for, and asks, What kind of business do you wish to do? To which I answered, And any honorable business in which a laborer can make a living for a small family. A sol solid-looking middle-aged man says, We need a sawmill in this country, and have met and arranged to send off to purchase an engine, saw, and all necessary machinery to cut lumber. He asked me this question, Are you a man of capital? I told him I had a few hundred dollars. He said we lack four hundred dollars of having enough to send for them immediately. Something said, keep out of the mills and engines unless you are a skilled engineer and can do everything to repair and keep the machine in motion. They insisted that I should invest. I hesitated because that was all the money I had on earth. A, talk, a talky little fellow said to me it would be wisdom to invest and he expected some money within 30 days. As soon as, as the saw cut the first line, he would pay me $800 for my stock in the mill company. I put my money in at once, and all aboard for the lumber cutting. The mill was sent for, arrived, set up, a log rolled on, a line was caught, and many lines were cut. I looked around for my little man and felt I would take my money and go home. I inquired for him and was told he had been in the calaboose a week for getting drunk and would be there in the county jail 60 days to pay a fine assessed against him for violating city dis city ordinances. Not discouraged, <clears throat> I told others I would take the same proposition that the little man had made me and as I walked wanted to go home. One of them said, in about a week I will purchase your claim if my money comes as I expect it will. I engaged my work for my board until his money came. A number of the partners of this mill drank to some extent. They had set Tuesday night as a kind of dedicatory jollity. All got very happy and went to their respective homes full of beer, and the engineer was so full that he forgot or neglected to close the furnace. There was quite a gale of wind that night and blew sparks of fire into some shavings and sawdust which spread from place to place until all the machinery was consumed by fire. With saw and carriages all ruined, I felt at this time there was no rabbit's foot in the game and said to myself, the man of God got my ten dollars and alcohol, beer, and confidence got the rest. I was afoot and alone without a penny to feed my wife and babies. So I ended my first life as a business fool. I did as, mit as the people advised, without exercising any of my powers of reason until I became a mental dwarf, which required many years to overcome. The greatest struggle of all my life was to have confidence and realize that God had put into each man the brain and all the business qualities to make him a good living, with plenty for those depending upon his services provided that he would make good use of his gifts. Attend to one thing at a time, and that one thing all the time. These are my experimental allegories. In the first part of my life, it will be seen by the reader I was young and inexperienced and choosing pursuits in which I could succeed. I grew up believing that in counsel there was safety. I felt the lack of experience and wished to learn all I could from older persons. It was my desire to live an honest and industrious life. I did not think for many years that my failures were due to a lack of self-reliance, but at least I lost all confidence in my. But at last, I lost all confidence in myself and took advice not matured to suit my case. I never thought wise men had to take time to mature a business plan, but suppose they were full and could unload at any time for my benefit, if I only asked them. Then I thought it might help me some if I would dress better. With that idea front I got a new hat and no change for the better was apparent. I shaved. All was the same in results. I even went so far as to black my boots but no star of hope appeared to me. So I did not come out on dress parade anymore and all was dark again. No money, no friends on earth and the minister told me there was great danger of me meeting Peter in a bad humor about the little ten dollars I had so grudgingly given to the church committee whom I had called rabbit's feet. When they only got ten after all that prayer, preach, and parade, I felt the show was slim for me to get into heaven if he was mad about the money, so I pulled out again for the big road. Had not traveled far until I got, got a small bug in one of my eyes, and it scratched and kicked and made 
maiden kept it sore so long that I got to believe one eye would answer if I would use it. I began to look with it the best I could. I traveled on and on in the dim road of hope, met many persons at forks of roads, but as I could use but one eye, I thought I could see the rabbit's foot of deception for sale at every fork of the road. As I had no money, I could purchase no more, and had to travel many tiresome miles alone. Tremblingly, I sank to rest in the shade of a tree and soliloquized. Do you realize that when man has done the best he can and failed at every turn and hope has been torn from his horizon as by a cyclone with all its fury, his heart falls as stone from the temple of life, and he turns from the joys of hope and hates their flattering tongues, and their sweet syllables are to him as bitter as gall, and he contemplates joy only in the thought of death. He feels that all the gates of love are shut, and forever barred to him and his dear ones. Love turns to hatred, even his own life. He gives up and looks on to and for death, and builds many temples of mine, and feels that death and annihilation, or anything but life, would be glorious change for him. He cries when he should laugh, hates when he should love. He feels that battle of life is lost, and he and his captives in life will be perpetual servitude. His is only as a vessel on the surging waves of an enraged sea, drifting to the twisting throat of a whirlpool that swallows and safely hides all its victims at the bottom.